Ah, it's the yeah. Freedom Fiends live. What did it do? What's up, Nima? How are you? Chilling, chilling. Just want to give everybody a, a warm welcome to the Freedom Fiends live show. You know what it is. If you don't, this is the show where we make fun of the state, make fun of the state's works, and basically ridicule all the idiots and horizontal enforcers who think that the government is a good thing. Yes. Yes. And, and if you'd like to call us and tell us stories about how the government has screwed you over, um, or how it's screwed over people that you know of, or that you've read about, give us a call at 307-215-5171. And we are in hour eight of Kokesh Gate, so if Adam Kokesh <laughs> wants to call in, uh, we'd welcome it. Kokesh Gate, why don't you enlighten the listeners into what that is? Uh, oh, uh, oh, you know you want to. You know well, you want to. I just, you, you love know. your pod beef. That's your favorite meat. Not really. I just, I just call. I just gotta, you know, point things out when I see them. And I don't really like pod beef, uh, and it's not a hobby. Although there is a, um, a category on the Fiends blog that we added of pod beef when we started. Mostly the blog. just because we like to say the word because we invented it. Yeah, I, I used to think, uh, like liberty was, you know, I couldn't criticize anybody, even if they were wrong, totally wrong, because. Uh, we're all in this leaky lifeboat and we have to cling together. But I think if Liberty's ever to be able to take it, be, be mainstream, uh, there has to be room for like calling someone out when they're wrong. So, uh, I, I don't have to, you know, tiptoe around and like Adam Kokash can take it. I mean, he did say fuck you to me on, uh, on a Facebook post. No, but, I think he uh, said go fuck yourself. Ah. Yeah, it's pretty much the same thing, but yeah. Okay. It's a little want... different. It puts it puts the power in your hands. He's asking uh, you to go fuck yourself. <laughs> it's more liberty no, minded. He told me and my friends to go fuck ourselves. So yeah, oh, I want okay. to go on the okay. Fiend's blog, the whole bloody stories there. Uh yeah. Yeah. You know, and he th I, the reason I'm inviting him on is because he thought I was keeping him from commenting and talking behind his back, but he's not my friend in life or on Facebook, so you know, my, my Facebook is friends only, so he couldn't read what I said about him. Someone pointed it out to him. And, uh, you know, after I'd written him and he never wrote back, and I got an autoresponder saying, we are very concerned with your thoughts and opinions. We'll try to get back to you, but don't count on it or something like that. You right, know, like, a, like, like, it was, a like it was from a state house office yeah. or something. Yeah, actually, I've never, ever gotten anything like that from a human. I've only gotten them from corporations and mm. state reps and you know congressmen and stuff. <laughs> state yeah which aren't human <laughs> well, st state reps in wyoming write you back and say you're wrong and here's why and here's why i know better than you and they ah. personally write back but you know okay yeah you, know, you know real politicians yeah yeah well you weren't trying to all you were trying to say to kokesh was maybe he's not an expert in kink and so shouldn't psychoanalyze uh the the subject which he seemed to be doing in this video that you posted in your post. Um, but you emailed him about it, and yeah. yeah, he never emailed you back. So it's not like you were, you know, throwing stones behind the man's back. You were throwing it right at his face. I wasn't even throwing it. I was The, the email was really polite, and he didn't respond. So I kind of, like, you know, yacked about it and gossiped with, you know, like a bunch of hairdressers on my Facebook page with my friends. And uh, I guess someone sent him a screenshot or something. I don't know. But, you know, he was wrong, wrong, wrong. And, like... I defend kink because a lot of people have a lot of misunderstandings about it. And I think it's about where homosexuality was in the 50s. And I think, uh, you know, if he'd been this in misinformed giving advice to a gay man instead of a kinky man, like his audience would have disappeared overnight. And I don't see the difference. I see it as like, you know, a, a voluntary sexuality people define themselves as and to like take it to task and suggest that you have, you know, psychological problems that need addressing or saying like he did or saying, you know, don't become like the state or, you know, to the point mm. of like not even knowing that a male isn't called a dominatrix. He used the word dominatrix and he said, well, I used it because nobody would know what a what a dominator is. And dominator is not even the right word either. It's dom, you know, sexual dominant. Uh, <laughs> I'd, I'd say Al, uh, Adam dominated the guy with his answer. <laughs> maybe, maybe. And you know, yeah. I mean, if a guy who poses with his giant muscles and two guns with his crossed arms, like squinting into the camera as his, you know, main publicity photo, can't take a little critique, you know, I mean, this isn't like the last Bob Beef I had was kind of like beating up an old lady, you know. I think this is more of an even, <laughs> I think this is more of an even match. So, you know, I, I don't even want to beef with Adam. I just want to like have him know what I was really saying rather than just have him thinking that I was. Me, 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 me. 
Yeah, I mean, he took it pretty harsh. I mean, saying that you were trash talking him and telling you to go f yourself, and not only you, but our your presumptuous friends. I'm not sure what friends of yours presume because Adam didn't enlighten us to that. But. Oh well, it's in the. There's a screenshot of it on my uh, blog post to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know, mm-hmm. it kind of seems like like. High grade school, like, well, I'm going to blog at you because you Facebooked at me. But that's how people communicate now, you know. I mean, it's the internet. We talk. We talk to each other. So if he wants yeah, to talk, yeah. call in. The number is 307-215-5171. I sent him an email today, showed him the blog post, invited him to respond on the blog or call into The Fiends now or, uh, you know, go on Anarchy Gumbo if he wants a whole hour and a half or something. Mm, yeah. I ain't shutting him out. I don't. I don't talk behind people's back. Totally. Yeah. You're welcome, Adam. I mean, we dig some of the stuff you do, man. We're not. Yeah, man. We just wanted to call you out on something. I love the uh, the video he did talking to the you know, he's an ex Marine and he's talking to the Marines that are guarding the Federal Reserve and saying, yeah, do you is this constitutional? Do you know why you're doing this? And I love that. I love some of what he does. I just want him. uh, He's also really fattest. You know, whenever he talks about a cop, like the first thing he says is like, yeah, this fat ass donut eating cop. You know, I'm wondering if he, like, got beat up by a fat bully when he was a kid, or maybe he was fat as a kid. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why he does it either, but I do know that when, when I'm hating on cops, I use any invective I can think of. So, I don't think it's it's out of the realm to, to call cops fat. I've heard you say eaters, fat, too, but... Uh, it's mostly with regard to cops, though, because I want people to know that... And plus, cops' fatness gets on my nerves more than anybody else's. Because we're paying or, for it. Because we're paying for it, man. The, the, I bought those donuts for your fat ass, and then you're going to go <laughs> get fat so you can impress me with your bu- giant belly while you tase my Yeah, ass. and, you know, Screw if, you. if they weren't cops, you could just probably outrun them. But, uh... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I've lost yeah. 11 pounds, by the way, on the Fiends diet. Which, oh yeah, uh, you're still losing. When awesome. I when I hit when I hit 20, oh you changed its name. It's the Fiends. Yeah, diet. it's gonna be the Fiends diet because right. at 20 pounds I'm gonna get you on it, and uh, then you know write a book, lose weight okay. with the Fiends okay. diet while eating yummy food every day and yeah, lots of yeah. it. Well, I have been trying to avoid grains and eat uh, meat and fat as much as possible. Last night when I got home from this um, this DJ gig, I was shadowing. I was starving, and so instead of eating chips and stuff, I, I made myself um, a bacon cheese avocado casserole. I know cheese isn't technically primal, but it's not grain, so and it's all it's mostly fat and protein. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, I want to make it clear we're not doing a primal diet. It's so it's such a moderated. Uh, you know, modified primal diet that it doesn't really deserve to be called modified. I'm going to type it all up at some point, but okay. not until I lose 20 pounds because then I think I have a reason to say it. You know, it's kind of like <laughs> I told you about I had this friend that had been like divorced twice and married again for six months and was a licensed marriage counselor in Colorado and then like, you know, drunkenly hit on me in the middle of the night and I blocked her one night. You know, mm-hmm. I think someone who's yeah, been yeah. married, divorced twice and married successfully, I guess, for six months, but hitting on people can't really call themselves, you know, a valid marriage counselor, regardless of what piece of paper they have. <laughs> and I kind of think that someone who's lost 11 pounds can't really speak to dieting to, to give advice. But, you know, when I've lost 20 pounds, I think that's that's a good amount to lose to be able to start talking about it. And giving sure. advice. Yeah. But then, of course, the FDA will probably shut me down because they'll say I'm, you know, practicing medicine without a license. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, they don't take that too much. Um, like, what was it? Oh, the the guy some somewhere in the southeastern part of the country. We talked about this on a previous episode who was blogging about um, – the primal diet or some kind of paleo diet. I'm not sure what exactly his diet was, but he was basically saying it kept him, it, it helped cure, not cure, I guess cure his diabetes. Like he was diabetic. He had all sorts of health problems, uh, you know, cause he was addicted to sugar and grains and he sort of swore off of them and was, was letting people know how it affected his life, this new diet. And the FDA came in and said, you can't give medical advice. You're not a licensed doctor. You need to shut this down. Yeah. So as we enter hour 12, or is it 13, of Kokesh Gate here, uh, we'll change the subject. And um, I want to talk about a little tech news you can use. We're actually doing an experiment today. We're rebroadcasting the LRN feed onto this, the Fiends feed to try to avoid confusion we've had before. So, yeah, we'll uh, talk about yeah. that, that more in just a little bit. We're going to go sell some stuff, so uh, buy it. Yeah. Buy it. Buy it, buy you it. suckers. I'm kidding. We're all in this boat together, man. We're not suckers. Man, I just lost all our audience. 
I'm kidding. You, you always do. Want to search porn in private? Or maybe you just want to talk to your friends without some tech goon hired off a pizza box snooping through your private thoughts. Metropipe VPN is a secure computing service operated by privacy-loving anarcho-capitalists. Accounts can be had for as little as $7.50 a month. They take Bitcoin, don't keep any logs, and hate nanny intrusions as much as you do. Get a 25% discount by going to metropipe.net slash fiends. That's metropipe.net slash fiends. You've read books, attended lectures, and you know the Constitution well enough to know it's a well-crafted blueprint to create an ever-increasing federal empire. But there's still one thing missing. Buttons! Freedom Fiends now has buttons. We have Freedom Fiends, Anarchy Gumbo, and two designs for guns and weed the road to freedom. Wear them with pride. Use them to start conversations with statists. It's only $6 for four buttons, including shipping. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the link at the top that says buttons. I recently noticed that uh, Alex Jones have his uh, obsession with some vitamin tambourine, or what's the name of it? Uh, the Lou Rockle. Uh, I read him several times and I clearly remember saying, I hate fat people. And now your last fresh beef, Adam Kakesh. I mean, he's obsessed with fitness. Why those podcasters or like the relatively influential <laughs> people are so against fat people and they're so obsessed with being fit and in shape? Well, because like, they video cast, we audio cast, so I don't care that I'm, you know, five foot five and weighed. 178 pounds and weighed 189 a month ago um i think it's i think it's deeper than that though too i think in america um americans don't really have a long history of food culture i think americans are kind yeah. of like running around like a chicken with its head chopped off trying to figure out what they're supposed to eat and there's always the government involvement and you know since upton sinclair wrote the jungle it's been sort of good uh, reference like, it's it's been a hobby of the press to try to figure out what is the healthiest thing to eat and it always seems to wave <laughs> back and forth and all sorts of agencies like the FDA are involved in it um so i feel like it's a media thing it's a culture of media in america that's always trying to figure out how to be healthy and americans don't really know that we're unsure of it and so we we listen to the latest fad and, and i think that this is kind of the libertarian fad is to eat paleo. And Alex Jones is not a skinny guy. He's lost some not weight. Not at all, no. But uh, people have actually confused me with him several times. You know, like, oh, yeah, I saw a picture. They saw a picture of me, like, playing Dan Banning from, uh, you know, the, the fat cop <laughs> in uh, <laughs> Guns and Weed. And they are like, yeah, I saw Alex Jones in some documentary where he's playing a cop. I'm like, oh, uh, no, that's me. <laughs> I mean, we're both, you know, he's he says he's 36 or something, but I, I, I'm 48 and I look a little younger than him, I think. Um, but... We used to be like, you know, he's probably a little taller, but we used to be, we could, we could be in the same police lineup and probably will be someday. Same FEMA lineup. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't think you look too much like Alex Jones, but um, yeah, I, I think the obsession and also because um, with the paleo movement, it's very anti-government. It, it sort of is on this thing that everything the government tells you with the food pyramid as far as eating whole grains all the time. and, and Which they don't do anymore. Fat. They don't have the food pyramid. They have some other way of doing it now. Oh, yeah. They, they, have, my plate dot gov. they have my yeah. plate dot gov now. From your so, federal um, family will tell right. you how to eat. So, so instead, it's kind of like a, a pie chart that looks like a plate and tells you how much of things you're supposed to eat. But it's the same concept. It's the government telling you to eat grains. And since the paleo thing is, say, is basically calling the government out and saying, hey, this is all wrong, I think that's the reason a lot of libertarian podcasters are, are really into it. The food pyramid and the myplate.gov are both the government telling you to eat lots of what the government subsidizes, basically. Exactly. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, I mean, there are, I, I understand that. And I mean, like, what surprised me is, like, the, the people which call themselves libertarians uh, have, like, the need to share, uh, I mean, really, like, in the case of Lou Rockwell, the hate. Then, you know, that, that's, that's going to surprise me. Share the hate for what? You know, for, 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 for the f uh, fat and not in shape people. Uh, I've never heard Alex Jones or Lou Rockwell do it. I listen to them in moderation. Um, no, I, I mean, I, I read it on Lou Rockwell's blog, and okay, it was posted okay. from him. Yeah, well, he looks like a guy who's probably naturally skinny, you know. Um, 
Adam, no, I, mean, I think he's actually lost a lot of weight. He used to be kind of chunky. Yeah, in his okay. in his new pictures, he looks pretty skinny, and I bet he attributes it to his uh, his whatever he's diet. selling. Is he selling anything like Alex Jones does? Uh, well, uh, no, I, a, I believe he's not selling anything. Okay, I tend to he, listen he doesn't to people sell, who but aren't he, he selling does, anything. He, he does sell in a way because. Um, they do blog a lot about this this kind of a diet, and then they also post things like, this is what Lou Rockwell readers bought on Amazon, and a lot of times it is stuff related to the diet, like books about it, or the type of foods that you might want to eat on it. Um, and, and so he posts those through Amazon, but whenever you click through those links, he gets money because he's an Amazon affiliate. So he doesn't sell anything directly, but he does uh, profit in some sort of way if people do buy the things he advises as far as health food. Okay, we ain't selling nothing food wise. We're selling the truth, man. Yeah. <laughs> does does Adam? I don't think Adam. I don't know. Does he take ads? I only ever watch his YouTube videos. I, I've never listened to. Yeah, I I only see few of his things, and I mean, from how he looks, he is obsessed with fitness. But I don't know what his opinions on that are. So uh, I I really can't can't judge him. I just add him, to, uh, you know, among those two because it's your new fresh beef. I know Pete Ayer, who I definitely consider a friend. I know Pete Ayer, who's also very in shape and works at it hard. Um, I know that he sponsored or had an advertiser at some point, or he was a spokesperson for some kind of hemp oil uh, health product. And I think Adam may have been in on that too or not, but I'm not positive. Yeah, I have, I have no, no, no idea about, about that. I don't really follow them closely. So... I, I really think, though, the root of this is a cultural thing. I think all Americans are in some sense obsessed with, with health or fitness, um, whether it be that they're upset that they are not fit or they are fit and they think other people should be fit. I, I think it's a, it's an American thing. How it's, do people it's in the politi- Czech Republic it's act? It's political, too. I mean, like, you know, Michelle Obama is, like, going to war with fat, you know, and, like, saying, like, she's yeah. going to pa- get her husband to pass laws to, like, make America's children more fit. But yeah, how does it work where you are, Vaslov? Uh, I um, I don't know. We have a recent prohibition here, so... I know, uh, that, I know it, that I've been to Prague, and people on the average are more fit there than on the average in America. There are more drop-dead gorgeous women walking around Prague, too. Yeah, I, I think like that models. I see it... I'm sorry. I, I think that I saw a chart like a few weeks ago uh, where the U.S. was the first and the Czech Republic was in the, the ten. Wow. In, in the amount of fat people. In obese. Obesity? Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks for calling in, Vaslav. Call in any time. Okay. Yeah. Have a thanks. great day, man. Have yeah, a yeah. great night. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, Vaslav. Worms. Should decisions on what you put in your body be left up to people whose very job depends on keeping certain plants illegal? Or do you believe in freedom of ingestion? The Genome Project is a cannabis science community founded by a leading DNA scientist. We fight ignorance with information. We don't have all of the answers, but we put all of our proceeds into finding them. If this requires sequencing the genomes of a forbidden plant, we've done it. If it requires leaving the country for the free pursuit of science, we've done that as well. The Genome Project is an ongoing crowdsourced experiment in free pursuit of the truth on cannabinoid sciences. Join us and participate in studying Mary Jane's genome. Get the app by searching Jane-Ohm on iTunes. The app is only $1.99 and all proceeds go to furthering and disseminating scientific truth. You must be 17 or older to download the app. Search Janome on iTunes. That's J A N E O M E. Want to contribute to Liberty but short on cash? You can help the Freedom Fiends without even spending a post 1964 dime. Download uTorrent and start seeding Fiends episodes. Follow twitter.com slash fiendtorrents to grab the past episodes and new ones as they post. Leave your computer on seeding the torrents while you're at work or asleep. The more people seeding the Fiends, the more drone proof we'll be when the boot comes down. That's twitter.com slash fiendtorrents. I learned a lot from that interview. I, I mean, and I'd That's always, nice. 
I never considered myself an expert on Islam, but I do like to follow, uh, you know, Mideast foreign policy and, and Mideast politics. And I always felt like I probably know more than the average American who can't find Iraq on a map. Well, but you have relatives I, I feel like, that live in Iran, too. Your grandfather right, lives in Iran. Right. And so I always felt like I had a personal tie. But um, there was there was things I had no idea about, like even subject wise, subjects that I wouldn't even have thought to brought up that that will brought up. So if you brought and I, I think it's. To have brung up, to have well, brought up, it? to have brought okay. up. Okay, thank thank you very much, grammar educator Michael Dean. So, thank you for not calling me the gra a grammar Nazi. <laughs> yes, you're not. Uh, but anyway, you know what I mean. Will will definitely um, shed a whole lot of light on Islam, how it's compatible with liberty, um, how it can be compatible libertarianism and private law and sound money and i think he also cleared up a whole lot of misconceptions on islam itself and i think it's really important now with the culture not the culture but uh you know in the news now is, is a lot of the riots and on a lot of posts all over the internet in the comment section there's a lot of hate being directed towards the islamic world right now and i think listening to will coley is a good way to help stop that short you know someone actually yeah. asked me today and and, and, I, and i know that the unrest in the middle east which is you know i rem i remember unrest in the middle east from when i was a little kid it's nothing new and it goes back to uh, abraham had two sons but a lot of it this week is being blamed on this dumb little youtube video which is horribly produced and suspect and a whole bunch of other things but um it probably has more to do with the, the anniversary of the 9 11 attacks and just the u.s is still over there pushing people around um you know, and a lot of people, uh, well, is that what you called to talking about, uh, Chandler? Yeah, yes. Go. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Well, I first off, I'm, I'm having a very hard time dealing with all the Muslim bashing out there. Um, I'm not a religious person. I consider myself a deist, but I have a lot Me of too. respect for, pe for genuine people of all faiths that preach peace tolerance, all that stuff. And I, like you, I'm seeing the rise of Muslim bashing. And a lot of it is the, you know, Fox News, Neocon, they hate us, you know, every country mm -hmm. they're in, they want to take over and they don't like freedom and it, they want to kill the infidel. And it's nonsense. I mean, I, I, like I said, I learned a lot from that interview with Will as well, but I've, I've followed uh, Middle Eastern foreign policy as well for quite some time. And I've, I've, you know, I've read the Quran. I had a very difficult time getting through it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, the English translation, it, it, you know, a lot of the subject matter was kind of foreign to me, but I've also read the Torah and the Bible and it's all kind of foreign to me, but you know, whatever. Um, I just don't understand why people are so quick to jump and bash the Muslims all over again. I mean, I know throughout history there have always been scapegoats, usually religious minorities. But this Muslim bashing is ridiculous. You know, when I tried to point out, uh, you know, the, the similarities of uh, jurisprudence, you know, that uh, the founding fathers and, and all that borrowed, the, the fundamental tenets, you know, people are like, oh, that's bullshit. And oh, I suppose you probably. Yeah, well, they're like, oh, and I suppose you're going to talk about how the founders were all Masons and Deists, which, I mean, we could argue that, too. But I didn't. You know, I didn't bring that up because that wasn't the point. You know, I said and I've said to many of these people, I'm like, OK, have you actually talked to anyone who's Muslim? Because I've talked to several <laughs> people that are Muslim, are practicing Muslims, and I've talked to people that are secular and people that are just from Middle Eastern areas. In fact, there's a gentleman right locally that I spoke to yesterday. I talked with the guy for two hours. I don't know if he's Muslim or not. I didn't ask him because I didn't care, to be honest with you. But I know he's of Middle Eastern descent. And this guy rocks the house, man. He is so smart and he is so kind. I mean, he he was a businessman and he just rocked the house. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you confront people with that question, you don't get an answer. You get, oh, you just don't understand. You know, we need to stick up for the fundamental American principles and fight for the Constitution. And, and you know, they'll slather Jesus on there and all that stuff. It, it's just insane. And then, like you said, you're seeing a lot of the people say, 
oh, look at all that rioting in the Middle East, you know, and all because of some silly movie, which the movie has nothing well, to do with. Well, it does it. have something to do with some of what's going on <clears throat> over there. I mean, it, it's being said is that. And I've seen American flags burned and presidents burned in effigy, you know, in the Middle East on TV going back to Nixon when I was a yeah, kid. Yeah, for 60 um, years. But when it does upset them. A lot, a lot of them, a lot of people over there do do not understand our free speech. You know, they look to governments to quash what they consider bad speech. And I've seen even American reaction to it this week. A friend of mine said to me, like a friend who's not anti-Muslim and is like, oh, we should understand everybody. But why doesn't the American government, you know, take that off of YouTube or stop those people from saying that out of respect? And it's like they don't understand the idea of free speech or the First Amendment or the slippery slope of when you ba ba ban the worst speech, you end up banning all speech. Mm -hmm. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I mean, go back to like the, the fatwa against, uh, you know, the author of the, the Satanic Verses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah you know, it's like thing. they don't get why our government, why a government isn't stepping up to protect their feelings, which is... Uh, well, I could argue that, though, because, you know, a lot of the extremism and the intolerance of freedom of speech... Hey, and we're going into it. We're going into a, um, a selling segment here. Um, why don't you hold on the line with this, Chandler? Why don't you, we'll we'll why don't have you... more. Ugh, I'm so sick of looking at Steve's wedding pics, and I'm all out of passive-aggressive comments. What else am I supposed to do at work all day? Sick of stalking your ex on Facebook? Yeah! Are you all out of cute cats and autocorrect mishaps to lol at? Duh! Freedom Fiends to the rescue! The Fiends now have a blog. Read all about the latest tyranny today. Dream about lip pair. Laugh while Western civilization collapses. Just click on the cat icon to the right of freedomfiends.com. Freedom Fiends blog. Read it! I think, and Will actually pointed this out quite uh, accurately, a lot of that intolerance that you see f from people in the Middle East that, as you say, don't understand some of the freedoms we have and beg the state, that's because the state funds a lot of that extremism and that intolerance. They our encourage it. And their our state and their states. Right, and I don't differentiate the two. To me, yeah, exactly. they're just I don't the either. state. <laughs> DJ just yeah. got a t-shirt that says, all governments are corrupt. I really like it. Nice. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and all that's it. And I can't, I, I'm telling you guys, it's it's boggling my mind. Because, I mean, you should see not just the, the comments about me defending Muslims, but my anarchist views. I mean, the, the vehemence and, and hate that comes, you know, you just don't understand and you want to spread your lies and propaganda and you want chaos. And it's like, I just want peace. I just want to be left alone. I just want you to be left alone. I want us to not be he sitting here on YouTube or uh, Facebook or on the talk shows bitching and arguing about this stuff. Why can't we be c conducting commerce and peace? Why can't we be doing other activities? You know, well, I, I why think do the we thing have is to fight about this stuff? These people who are in, as Will called it, the anti-Muslim Luniverse, the people that you're talking to on the internet who give these mus Muslim bashing comments, um, I think it is a scapegoat thing. I mean, we all see that there's horrible problems in the world. They attribute that to this rising Sharia law that's going to come take everything over. They think that yeah. that's what caused the wars in the Middle East. They think that's what causes a whole host of problems that the whole world is experiencing. The same way we attribute that to the state, I would argue correctly, they, uh, mis they misinterpret it and blame this whole muslim world for this this yeah. ideology and they've, well, they've and got it's it not wrong just, it's not just the muslim world i mean i i've long been i guess what you i don't know you could consider anti-zionist or anything i have a real big problem with the state of israel but i've never had a problem with the people of israel yeah i see that the state indoctrinates and tyrannizes its own people just as much as we do if not right. more you and know? i agree with that statement about the state versus and the differentiating with the, the people but to a lot of people especially liberals saying that is tantamount to saying i don't think all blacks are niggers just the ones that are niggers yeah you know yeah. they look at yeah. it like that no you're but, absolutely right I it's mean, the reason i pick out the israeli state more than other states is because they are so uh, influential in american political and military policy i mean basically I think if you join the, the, the armed forces at this point, you're kind of joining the Israeli army.
You are. <laughs> and I think yeah. and there's no question. And I think a lo- and the other thing that's really bothering me is the propaganda that's been going out. I've been watching it. I haven't been online and commenting a whole lot. I've been trying to just ease back a little. I've been watching all this propaganda that's been circling around. The push for war, it's come I mean oh, it's Net- been now you yeah, Netanyahu was Netanyahu yeah. was on TV yeah. yesterday like saying like why will the United States not stop up? you know, step up and help us with this. Like, what do we have to wait for? Basically saying, like, I've got a boner to wipe uh, Iran off the map. Yeah, that guy's a terrorist. He is. He is. Although I do got to hand it to uh, some of the generals in the military who have been saying, we're not going to be complicit in this. And using that word complicit, you know, if Israel attacks, we will not be complicit in the attack. And Uh, and one of them had an assassination attempt against him. And, you know, the, the Nobel Peace Prize is for murderers, not just good guys. Obama's not the first murderer to win it. Um, um, Nock and Bagan won it. And, you know, he was in, he was responsible for the Hebrew resistance movement, which, uh, bombed the King David Hotel in Jerusalem in 1946 and killed, yes, you know, 91 people, British, Arab, and Jewish. Yeah. Yeah, and didn't Henry he- Kissinger also win a Nobel yeah. Peace Prize? Yeah. yeah that should <laughs> say a- it right there. Yeah, it's not a prize for peace. It's a prize for murdering people. Yeah, I, I don't know. Nobel War Prize. I think the biggest problem our movement is running into is the goals we seek are far off and people can't begin to work through a transition to get there. Mm -hmm. They just want to reform the state. And they don't want to go through that transition period. Are we going to abolish the state tomorrow? No. And we're all realistic about that. But we're not going to stop talking about that. We're not going to start suggesting to people that there are alternative ways. And I don't know, man. I don't I don't understand how to do it anymore to get people thinking in different directions. Yep. You know, they just, they just say, oh, you just want chaos and anarchy tomorrow and you're crazy and that's not realistic. I've never said that. On that, yeah. I think we're going to um, take another caller. We're, cool. ba- we're back. <laughs> we, sp- oh. we screwed up. I mean, we didn't screw up. This is our style, man. We went over yeah. the break. It's very free form. It is. It's like college <sighs> radio, man. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know. Cool. Well, you guys have a great day. All right. Thanks, right. brother. Call in Thanks anytime. for calling, Chandler. Take- Oops. I mean. <laughs> you, you know, I-, I think he brings up a good point with that That whole, you know, our tr- our. Tr- our goals are much more long term, I think, in the liberty movement. And the average person, I feel like the average American doesn't like long term solutions that require a lot of work to get there. Um, and that goes back to the whole fattest and, and health thing we were talking about. A lot of people don't want to put any effort into being healthy. Um, and you see this with, with big pharma, you know, they want to push pills on, onto people. I have, I have people I know in my personal life, um, who never seem to want to do any work to better themselves because they think that the corporations and the powers that be are hard at work providing easy, quick fixes, you know, in the form of pills or whatever. So I think that that's a, a cultural problem too. This idea that, you know, I don't want to put any effort. I don't want to make the long haul. I just want it to be fixed now. So give and me a know, solution now. And remember, the FDA approved a weight loss pill, Fen Fen or Fun Fun, at one point. <laughs> and, you know, so many people got <laughs> organ damage from it that it was pulled. And so uh, maybe the government solutions aren't even good solutions. No, I don't think they are at all. But But they are solutions that they position as quick fixes. And so even though people... <sighs> Even though I think people in their hearts know that quick fixes and get rich quick schemes don't work, they're just too tempted. It's like, it's like playing the lottery, right? They're just some people are just too tempted to take that chance and get something fixed quickly for them. Um, that they take that rather than going going the long route and actually putting work into things. Um, and to go back to the whole specific issue of this Muslim thing, did you watch that video? Um, I watched about two thirds of it. Muslims? It's about seventeen minutes long, and I don't even know if there's a movie. I mean, that's called the trailer, but it's really it looks like a bunch of scenes randomly picked out of a really horrible movie and just strung together with no intro or outro. 
Yeah, it's strung together really poorly. Um, you know, I watched the 13-minute thing, and, and it was labeled. One of the labelings was, you know, full movie HD. And it was the, it was about 13 or 14 minutes, and it was the same thing as another one called Sam Basil's Muhammad movie. Um, you know, there's been reporting saying that Sam Basil is, is not a real person. This is a pseudonym. And I think the AP tried to track down who who the cell phone number they called for the interview was, was to. And it was some guy that had been arrested previously for fraud and had just gotten out of jail and now he's a gas station clerk and he, he was denying it saying i don't know nothing about this movie i'm a gas station clerk how can and what I? did he what did he say the budget of it was <laughs> yeah yeah he, he goes i'm a gas station clerk how could i help make a five million dollar movie five million dollar movie man no, okay no uh, wow uh, we made guns and weed which is a 99 minute movie uh but it looks a lot better than that for uh 2600 bucks Man, they they're hiring the wrong people if they spent five million dollars on that seventeen minute turd. You know, I yeah. think I think sometimes that like bashing Muhammad is like the pod beef pod beef that little people do to get attention. Uh, remember that that preacher that was burning the Quran, you know, oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. putting videos of it on YouTube. Yeah, squirting pig's blood on it. Yeah, it's it it might just be a way to to get some attention. Um, that's kind of what Justin Romando uh, posits in a recent article he did that I think is really great and does a lot of good work to towards clearing up how this video came to be. Um, and and one of his last sentences he says, you know, this could all boil down to nothing more than the antics of a bunch of Southern California right wing lunatics having their idea of fun with YouTube. Or it could then, be, you know, it could be some some left wing people just trying to. <laughs> have yeah, some fun yeah. and, and uh it, you know, it kind of has a a coney 2012 feel to it in in the sense that nah, coney it feels was like a lot better made like, man coney was it a lot was, better made but, but a feel in the sense that it 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 almost feels like it was made for a specific political purpose you know it could is, have been made by the u.s government to like get that, a reason to go invade some country if that's what you're and saying that's 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 what i kind of mean i kind of mean that it, it has a feeling towards it that maybe it was i mean made that would be a, that would be classic cointel pro activity Right, right. And back to the movie, though. Um, completely ridiculous. I do advise people to watch it. Uh, it is entertaining, actually. It's called it, The Innocence of Muslims, right? It is. It's it's hilariously bad. Um, Muhammad is played by a long-haired white dude who acts like Keanu Reeves. Uh, they're kind of like Muhammad. He's like, he's like what? He's not he's even like going? Keanu Reeves. He's like the low-budget Keanu Reeves. He's like the, uh, yeah, the Skeet yeah. Ulrich of amateur <laughs> film. He is. He's ridiculous. Oh, oh, and um, there's this brown doctor in the beginning, and he says I think he's he, Mexican. He, maybe he's Mexican, but he writes this equation on on a whiteboard with a dry erase marker, and he goes, and it's all like serious. He's like, man plus X equals Islamic terrorist, and then he draws the corollary. He goes, X equals. He goes, um, Islamic terrorist minus X equals man, and then it like stops dramatically, like, like that's some kind of amazing equation, um. <laughs> Just ridiculous. And when, when I saw that, I was like, well, if I had to write an equation for that, it'd be more like Newton's third law, you know. Um, Man plus state equals shit. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Thinking, Damn it. Damn it. <laughs> you, you cussed. Okay. This episode, by put, the way, put is called... Put some money in the Bitcoin this, jar. This episode is called Bitcoin Swear Jar, which I think is also going to have to be the Bitcoin miss the intro and outro to a break jar. <laughs> yeah. I think I owe some money. But, you know, if if Ian Freeman can start an interview with... Uh, with, with <laughs> Uh, Derek J with Derek J's microphone down for 45 seconds. I can get away with one now and then. Sure. Why not? Why not? But yeah, I mean, I, I love you. you had to do, I, li I do. If you, if you had to do an equation, it'd be more like violent force applied from one entity on a second tends to result in violence for violent force applied back from the second body, you know, equal opposite reaction kind of thing. I don't know if they're equal since the American government has drones and whatnot. Um, or you could just boil it down to one word and, and call it blowback. Yeah, I heard that people were shooting at shooting uh, RPGs at drones in the Middle East somewhere this week. Hmm. Good for and, them. And then yeah. there's always like, then there's always the conspiracy taken to the nth degree. Like I had someone post on the freedom on on Facebook today saying there is no American embassy in Egypt. It's all a hoax. And I'm like, come on, man, just stop it. And they're like, no, look, it's not on Google Maps. And I'm thinking like, you know, the United States has a history of taking things off Google Maps, including Dick Cheney taking his house off of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean. But, you know, one thing that is true is that um, 
the Marines guarding those two embassies were holding rifles with no bullets in them at the order of some lady who, uh, uh, she's the U.S. ambassador to either Egypt or Libya. I'm not sure which. She, right. she was, well, a, when, and the mainstream media is not covering that, I think, because she was appointed by Bush and then reappointed to something higher by Obama. So by it's by like, Obama. It's mm-hmm. going to make either guys, either team's guy look bad if they report on that. I mean, you know, I, I've heard people saying like, that's horrible. That woman should be tried for treason. I don't even want to bring the state into it. I want to bring like logic into it. If you have someone guarding something with weapons, the weapons should be fully should be operational. Loaded. Yeah. Duh, Otherwise, duh. Yeah. you're just making them a target because U.S. Marines in front of an embassy in a hot region are targets. You know, yeah. and if you don't give them the ability to fight back, I mean, you're basically endangering someone's life for no reason other than uh, political theater. Well, I would quit if somebody told me to guard something in a hot region anywhere. If somebody told me to guard something and hold a gun, you in can't, plain man. Sight you, and not you'd be guilty it. of treason if you did. Yeah, apparently. Or of something, you know, pretty high up there that they, the government could lynch you for. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of uh, Obama and Muslims and this video, um, in one of the the big postings, one of the ones with two million views, uh, it was a reposting of this whole uh, Innocence of Muslims video. The guy who posted, his name is Forte X Two Four. Um, <laughs> he's trying to extort people with this in this in the oh yeah in the notes in the description. He says, "Want to remove this video from YouTube? Send a two thousand dollar Amazon dot com gift card to my email address." <laughs> And then I, I clicked on his channel to see what, what else he has on his channel. And his channel has a big Obama 2012 sticker on it. And he has other videos promoting the Democrats and stuff like that. So I don't really know what his angle is. And I know this this everything in this situation is ripe for stuff by conspiracy theorists. We're not them, but Well, a lot I of think weird that would questions. imply he's a COINTELPRO agent, too. <laughs> well, we don't want to go there. All of that together. There there's there's many questions. Many questions is, is what I'm saying. We'll have more answers later. Soon. We're not saying the Freedom Fiends are the one true path to anarchist liberation, but it's a good one. If you want to put your voluntarist money where your mouth is, consider making a donation to the Freedom Fiends. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the spinning coin on any post. Then make a one-time gift via PayPal or set up a monthly contribution of as little as $3. Giving to the Freedom Fiends helps advance education of horizontal liberation throughout the world. The Freedom Fiends. We work hard, so send us some money. Yo. Yo. It's the Fiends. It's the Fiends. And we're in day 29 of Kokesh Gate here. I love the smell of pot. I love the smell of pod beef in the morning. It smells like grade school. (laughs) Smells like steakums. Steakums. Yum. (laughs) <laughs> That's what fat people eat, like me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, steakums are not part of our new diet. I really? It's gonna, just beef. You're not going to lose a lot of money. on uh, Money. A lot of weight. A lot of Bitcoin. Hey, I saw this cool movie last night called In Time with Justin Timberlake. Uh, huh. it's, a, it's a sci-fi where not too distant future dystopia where um, the commodity of all commerce is time. And you can buy time from people and extend your lifespan. Or sell oh, cool. it, sell time, you know, and there's yeah. like, there's like a, you know, international monetary fund that has somehow stolen all of the time and has, you know, everyone who works there has millions of years and hmm. at the expense of everyone else. And Justin Timberlake and his weird hot girlfriend are, you know, breaking in to try to steal it. They're kind of like time socialists in a way, although it is <laughs> corporatist, not capitalism yeah. stealing. That time. actually sounds yeah. like a pretty interesting premise. I, I might give that a look. <laughs> Justin and Timberlake is Justin an Timberlake amazing. Justin was really lame and in sync. He's a good actor. He's, he's an funny. amazingly uh, co- beyond competent actor. I wouldn't say amazing actor. I mean, he's no Robert Downey Jr., but he's uh, he's damn good, man. Yeah, yeah. Him and yeah. Mark Wahlberg made it out of the boy bands intact and had another career. <laughs> What's it called? What's the movie called? In time. In you know, time. I also saw another uh, Justin Timberlake Which, movie, al- although it does sound surprisingly close to In Sync. <laughs> the title and he was in NSYNC yeah he was, was, he? He was in NSYNC yeah he was like the best one in NSYNC though he was like he, there's yeah. no lead singer in a boy band but a lot of times you'll tell who has more talent than the others yeah I also yeah. saw a really good um, Justin Timberlake movie called Alpha Dog you ever seen that I've heard of it I've seen the trailer but uh, yeah so it's that's, about that's the old, um, though. 
Uh, it's 2006. It's about the. It's directed by uh, Nick Cassavetes, who's awesome and way way better director than his dad, John Cassavetes. And you know, film film historians would lynch me for saying that, but uh, you know, I think John Cassavetes is kind of like the Emperor's New Clothes. Like, oh, he is who so important. No, like he was kind of like a 60s new wave French cinema filmmaker who happened to be American, uh, but worse than new wave cinema. Like really grainy, really annoying, really. Uh, ugh. But his son, Nick, is awesome, and Alpha Dog's a great movie, and it's about the uh, the kidnapping <clears throat> and murder of a kid by Jesse James Hollywood's gang in SoCal, and I know people that knew that guy. I can't go into too much detail, because they don't want to be uh, associated with him now, but um, yeah, he was a weed dealer, and uh, kind of kidnapped someone's kid brother who owed him money, and someone ended up murdering the kid on his behalf and like nine people are, you know, life in prison or on death row from this. It's an awesome movie though, man. Awesome movie. It's kind of, uh, names are changed, but, uh, it's the same story. Hmm. And actually the DA on that case got in trouble, um, and was asked to recuse himself from the case and didn't because he provided uh consulting work for free actually on this movie while the case was active before it went to court. Oh, wow. Yeah, oh, wow. which I think is kind of unethical. Like he was trying to like I need to get the word out about this, yeah. Guy, you know. Yeah, I think he should definitely they should the judge shouldn't have let him continue on the case. They shouldn't have asked him to recuse himself. They should yeah. have not allowed him to be the the counsel on the case. Yeah. Hmm. Ridiculous. Um but um back to movies. I, I do want to talk a little bit more about this horrible movie that was Innocence of the Muslims. Really? Um uh, I think we should just talk about movies we like for the rest of the cast, man. Unless Adam okay. Kokesh calls in well, I'd at like our phone number, the movie, which is 307-215-5171. That's the Adam Kokesh call-in hotline, bat line, bat phone, 307-215-5171. Adam or anyone who wants to talk about Adam, call in. I guess or we about talk anything. about movies we like. I don't want to talk about I Adam. Don't... You do want to talk about Adam. You're no, trying no. to get him to call. I'm sick of it. You should <laughs> Facebook message him and tell him to call. I don't want to talk about Adam. I want to talk with Adam on here. Ah, uh, you know okay. the. I mean, he he dissed me in public. We can we can hash it out in public. Yeah, I don't think he wants to do that. I think he feels like it'll be giving. He doesn't want to dignify you with a a, a public response. He maybe he was to... maybe he was drunk when he posted that. I know he does like to uh, imbibe. He's not a drunk, but you know, um, it was a late night like. <laughs> post so, yeah yeah who knows yeah go f yourself post usually <laughs> sound like late late at night and i'm a little tipsy yeah that's the equivalent of drunk dialing but drunk facebooking yeah yeah twatting Dr tweeting twatting drunk messaging it's a thing it's a thing all the kids are doing it yeah totally. i'm old enough to be adam's dad <laughs> but i'm not rich yeah, like Ad are. i'm not rich like adam's dad but uh yeah you were telling me adam's dad is uh Pretty well he's off a guy billionaire, from, pretty close to it. From uh, which ain't ain't a bad thing. Um, it's interesting. But he's, though, a, he's a status millionaire, though, isn't he? Well, he he made his fortune from uh, co-owning a consortium of gun owners that basically uh, their main, you know, a lot of what they sell to is every police agency in the country. Which uh, is not Adam, and you know, I'm not going to bash someone for doing commerce. And uh, you know, someone is not their dad. I mean, if you lumped me in with my dad, I would be. A guy who thinks Sarah Palin's going to save us from the Muslims, so I'm not going to go there. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. So movies, man. I don't watch them. Yeah. <laughs> you, if you're so busy you got, having a life, you got pussy. stuff to say about movies, pussy. I, I, I watch. I watch shows. I, I used to watch with my own co-host and best friend Nima. Yeah. Pussy. Yeah. Hey, so worms. Did you know that even like when I was a kid, like fourteen, there was a rumor that McDonald's restaurants used earthworms in their hamburgers. No. I think it was started by Wendy's or you know some compete or vegetarians, one or the other. Fiend phone, fiend phone. Oh, fiend. Is, Adam. is this Adam? Yeah, this is Adam. Who's this? This is Miles. Hey, Miles. What's up, man? How you doing, man? Oh, uh, not much. Uh, I heard you talking about the movie uh, In Time. I haven't seen it yet, but I have heard a very detailed uh, review of it uh, on, uh, yeah, it's that bad where they said it was uh, pretty awesome. But the big reason why I was calling was I wanted to uh, talk about something going on down here, the uh, the Reno Air Races. Okay. Oh, awesome. Yeah. I love Air Races. 
Well, one of the things is, is you know how there are all kinds of different versions and visions of libertarian paradise, everything ranging from, you know, crocodile and uh, <laughs> <laughs> to, uh, you know, some kind of version of uh, ancient Athens or maybe even ancient Sparta, except with battle rifles. And you forgot the moon is a harsh mistress, but yeah, there's a bunch of them. Yep, yep. Well, the air race, the Reno air races are kind of uh, the, I guess, the motorsports version of Libertarian Paradise, <laughs> the or the aviation version. The only so we're not talking can, an air show where like the Navy flies the Blue Angels over and shows our military might, right? Uh, they do that uh, during the breaks huh. between races. And now, <laughs> a message from our state. <laughs> well, yeah, but the way I figure it, if you're gonna be forced to spend that much money on that much kill power, at least you should get to show it off every now and then. Yeah, because, well, people... In fact, they even uh, said to a couple of uh, Navy pilots there, you know, all the diplomatic misadventures that the military is set on is uh, pretty absurd, in my opinion. So how's it a libertarian air paradise? Because they're not on sovereign soil and they're uh, out of the jurisdiction up in the air? Well, kind of. Well, basically, it's you get to do things with planes that you just can't do anywhere else. Like race round in a gigantic circle at 500 plus miles per hour. Cool. I mean, uh, in a, na a true nanny state environment, something like that seems to me like something that would make a nanny status pass out. Yeah, I remember, wasn't there about a year ago huh. at, at some air show, there was a, a horrible crash, like the plane crashed into the bleachers um, yep. and killed a few people. Yep. I was surprised when that happened that there weren't nanny staters calling for air shows to be banned or uh, similar things. Um, Sounds like and, one's going well, over, were. man. Is one going over you? Uh, uh, I didn't hey, hear that. Hey, we got a... Um, we gotta go sell some things, and uh, we're gonna open this up for another caller there. You got a closing comment real quick there, Luke? Miles? Oh, Miles. yeah. One of the things was that, that was that action was the Reno Air Races, and I had a front row seat for that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Thanks, man. <laughs> Call in any time, and we'll see you on the interwebs. All right. Talk to you later. Worms. Thanks. The Beans yeah. Live Show. I'll go ahead and give out the call-in number here if you'd like to be a part of The Fiend Speak. Go ahead and dial 307-215-5171. That, that is 307-215-5171. So what's up, Michael? I want to talk about another movie I just saw that I really like. It's Wall Street, Money Never Sleeps, which is the sequel okay. to Wall Street. Um, and Michael Douglas is in this one, but he's playing kind of... He's playing the same character, but a different... There's another guy kind of playing the evil greedy guy in it um oliver stone i really love him as a filmmaker he's really amazing um politically he's been kind of like palled around with communist communists before and like stuck up for you know castro and uh chavez and a few other people but he actually he may have changed because a while back i heard him say that if ron paul won the republican nomination he was going to vote for him which is yep quite a bit to say for a former socialist uh pinko you know Pink, pinko meaning <laughs> well that means someone who leans red but isn't necessarily a member of the communist party so um, oh is that where is that where it comes from yeah. i didn't know that that's, that's yeah, etymology they're not red. quite red but they're yeah. okay pinko yeah. huh yeah i never thought of that there you and go. i really think like this movie is is better at least has a better message than the first and i think oliver stone really understands the world it's like this movie is anti-corporatist not anti-capitalist although bill o'reilly mm -hmm. called it anti-capitalist and said he liked the first one better but you know and in the first one, because because he said that on his show, the Spin Zone, where he spins things ways yeah, that they aren't actually. Yeah, the ironically named Spin Show, no Spin Zone. Um, yeah. But Gordon Gecko in the first one ends up in handcuffs, and in this one ends up at the top of the world and like you know reunited with his estranged Dutch daughter and like doing the right thing in a way. So, not to give a spoiler, but uh, I guess I did. Sorry, <laughs> it's live, man. It's live, but it's a really good movie, and there's. There's a couple speeches in there. One from Gecko at a college that's great. And there's one um, that's like at the Federal Reserve, like when they were about to do QE1. Um, like it's what I imagined when, when 
<laughs> went on behind closed doors. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, pretty awesomely yeah. horrible. It's awesomely horrible what happens, but the movie is awesome because it yes. portrays it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. It's called. It's it's the sequel to Wall Street. Yeah, it's Wall Street. Money never sleeps. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Have, haven't we talked about Wall Street before? The movie on the cast. Uh, maybe. Yeah. I mean, maybe. it's it's kind of like such a social giant of pop culture. It's hard not to reference it at some point. I think. I don't know what we said about it. We talk a lot, man. We have a lot of episodes now. We do, we do, and it's hard for me to to differentiate what we've talked about on the phone personally and what we've talked about on the cast. Which is why we should start bugging our own house and just uh, constantly yeah, yeah. broadcasting it. Yeah, there you go. Self surveillance. <laughs> Keep us honest. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, man. Some of the things I say to you, you know, my thought, like Bob Dylan said, if my thought dreams could be seen, they'd probably put my head in a guillotine. Hmm. Mm. Oh, yeah. You know, the central scrutinizer is listening right now. You're you're a lot more. You're a lot. I guess I don't know. I don't know if respectful is the word. I, I kind of don't want to call you a scaredy little baby because you're not. But I feel like you're much more concerned with the goons kicking down your door than I am. <sighs> more respectful not, of them. Yeah. Well, respect respectful um, of their power, not respectful of them like they have any legitimacy. Well, I don't think but, respect is the word. You know, I think I think fear is the word. Um, okay. You know which. Maybe I'm a scaredy little girl, you know, in her pretty pink dress, or maybe I'm more of a realist than some people, not just you. But um, I don't know, man. I see what goes on, and and I try to. Uh, I don't I know. Guess it's I, not censor myself. I mean, I'm I bear my soul to the world and my innermost thoughts, yeah, but yeah. I try to carefully choose my words. Yeah, also, because yeah. words can really be misconstrued too. They you can. know. Um, and used out of context and used against people and are constantly. Yeah, they are constantly, especially uh, by the state and know, especially could, by the, the media. You could say I'm more I'm more afraid of the state than you, or you know, it could also be looked at as uh, I understand the power of words more than some people, and not just you. You know. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. I just I don't know. I kind of I kind of feel like I don't want to let it get to me. I try to to not. You know, I never preach violence, uh, even against the state, because I'm a nonviolent person, and I don't think that's the way to change the world, because then you just create a new cycle of violence, or you add to a cycle of violence that already exists. Um, but I do feel like... I know, I, I guess I kind of feel like the goons wouldn't go after somebody who's constantly talking in public about this kind of stuff. Um uh, they would though. They do. I mean, they went after Brendan Robb. They've gone after other people. You know, I think part of it. But they, of my, they had they had egg on their face with Brendan Robb, and they then, don't they don't notice it. They just lick it up and keep going. I think that <laughs> part of the reason I'm more cautious than some people is I've had a few experiences where my words have really been used against me. One when I was uh you know 16 and I wrote a letter to Mick Jagger and it ended up getting me kicked out of school. Uh, you know, one when I was. 18 and I was writing for a local entertainment newspaper and I did one column that was uh, it was basically I was late on my deadline and I just had this idea on the back burner for any time if that ever happened and it was like mm -hmm. it was a weekly column and I just told the editor to call it um, what I like about Ronald Wilson Reagan by Michael W. Dean and then to run like four inches of blank space and um, <laughs> That's and I did and it like it made me a pariah in my community uh, oh, you know, really? I mean, like, yeah. And, and it also made me a hero to some people that, you know, other people I didn't know. But there was this guy who was a local, like, celebrity. He was a DJ and talk show host on a local radio station that was, like, the local radio station in that town, uh, in that county. And his name was Steve Emke. And he wrote uh, a counter letter to the editor responding to my letter the following week and said, you know, um, this drunk, this drugged out little space cadet, Michael Dean, you know, should be like tried for treason. And it's, you know, I don't agree with everything the president says, but you should respect the president regardless. Just this incredibly status thing and like slandering me, calling me a drugged out little space cadet and, you know, prove it, dude. And, uh, I got a lawyer to call. I, I had a lawyer call him up and, uh, the next, the next edition, he had a, a well worded, probably lawyer written retraction. Which, you know, wasn't really? from his heart, but yeah. Oh. So, you know, I saw the power of words, you know, 20, 30, 18, 30 years ago, you know. But so, you won. You won that battle of words. Sort of. 
sort of he almost lost his job over it also because he signed it his name and then his radio station that was his mistake was putting his radio station uh, under it like yeah, it gave yeah, weight that, to his that's a big mistake you know, yeah. Well, not you only does it give weight, but it makes it. I mean, you you always see those disclaimers it it on, on it pins it on right, them. Yeah. on a, on opinion pieces or, or shows like that where it says you know these views are not necessarily the views of Fox Broadcasting Corporation. Yada yada yada. They put that disclaimer because you know public companies have shareholders and you you don't want to act like you're a spokesman for them when you're not. So so what's yeah, the official but, story on why Adam got kicked off of Russia today? I don't think there has been official story. Officially, Adam has said that. Uh, that it was a mutual decision that they both came to and decided not to pursue it anymore, and he he hasn't wanted to give out any more details than that. I haven't seen anybody else dig into it and find a a real reason. I mean, I don't know if I, I don't think it'd be public information because Russia Today is a uh, you know a foreign company owned so. by the Kremlin, actually. Which I don't take him to any task for. I mean, there were people who were like, he's un American because he's on a Russian network. I'd be on Russia Today in a, in a heartbeat, you know. Yeah, I, I would. I mean, I don't know. Although a lot like of work for them, a lot of baggage comes with it too. You know. Yeah, exactly. It's it's hard to understand what went on in editorial meetings and how Adam interacted with their their muckety mucks. I mean, they could be horrible to work for you. We don't we don't know that. And Adam could be, hasn't a lot, said could be stuff, something so. lost in translation too. Who knows? But yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, folks. Well, we've got plenty more fiends coming up after we go uh, engage in commerce. Yo, it's the Fiends. All right. Yo. So, uh, Fiends Live, we'll go ahead and give out the number again. If you want to call in, it's 307-215-5171. Again, that is 307-215-5171. To start off this second-to-last segment, in case you haven't realized how bunk politics is and how it is really not a good method for liberty activists to be putting their energy into... Um, Jesse Benton, the campaign director for Ron Paul's 2012 presidential campaign, uh, he received a lot of criticism for sort of showing Ron Paul as more of a conservative, uh, downplaying the things we all like about him and trying to upplay the things that regular Republicans might like. Um, a lot of people considered him a sellout. Uh, he is now officially sold out, <laughs> like completely officially. He is going to be the, the re-election campaign manager for Mitch McConnell, the Senate minority leader, Mitch McConnell. Um, who is as establishment as a Republican can get. Uh, in fact, whenever Tom Woods criticizes, you know, the mainstream media only showing a very narrow spectrum of discourse, he always uses Mitch McConnell. He says, he says, well, if your views aren't between Hillary Clinton and Mitch McConnell, then you don't get to be on TV. Um, so Benton has basically shown that he's not really a liberty guy. Uh, he is a political guy, uh, which a lot of us already knew. But if you needed any more convincing or any more evidence, uh, there it is right there. Which it really you upsets said you me wanted, that, that... You said you wanted to talk about that during the break. You told me that. And uh, I was like, come on, man. I'm so sick of the state. But then I was thinking I, like... I, I, <laughs> Other things I had to talk about, like I can't not tie the state into them. You know, I want exactly, to talk about. Exactly. Uh, I want to talk. Well, you go ahead. And, and in case somebody's on the LRN feed or somewhere else that that can listen to us now, that maybe um, is still you know some kind of Ron Paul patriot and thinks that we just need to kick the bums out and vote in the right people, um, I think this is another good way to show that the whole game is corrupt. There's no way to do it, uh, even if you have what you think are your people. Because Jesse Benton is not only was not only Ron Paul's campaign manager, he was also uh, big in his campaign in 2008, and he's well, also he's a he's a family relative of Ron Paul. Not not by <laughs> blood, right. but through marriage. He's, well, he's, there was also a cousin of Romney that was working on the Ron Paul campaign on the other side of the fence. But, uh, you know, and does Jesse say, well, I'm just trying to bring liberty to the Mitch McConnell campaign or anything like that? Uh, no, and Business Insider did a story on it, and they have a, a small interview with him where he's basically saying he doesn't see it as him selling out, and he just wants to, I guess, help Mitch McConnell capitalize on the fact that uh, these kind of pseudo-libertarian uh, rhetoric can get people elected, you know, vis-a-vis -vis Rand Paul. Um, so... If anything, he admits to the the idea that he's tinkering around the edges and trying to use this anti-government libertarianism light uh, to help McConnell get elected. Um, but he doesn't he doesn't say it you know with any shame. He, he says it sort of proudly. Uh, so I, I think that uh, politics 
either either Benton was a sellout from the beginning or the game corrupts people to this effect to where you're going to sell out basic principles for political wins. You're going to you don't want to play the game more than you're going to want to espouse liberty and and put and educate people on on how liberty works. Yeah. So, screw that guy. He's square. Yeah. He's square. So a couple things uh that I want to talk about that aren't politics directly but involve the state. One is or could involve the state. Windows Update did something really suspicious this week. Um, if you updated on a certain day, they fixed this supposedly a day or two later. But if you updated on a certain day or auto-updated, and it happened to me on one of my computers, it installed Skype as an update even if you'd never had Skype. So, like, I don't want Skype on the computer I use for secure stuff because it is yeah, not secure. Right. It's um, not open source. Nobody can examine the code of it. And it's owned by Microsoft who have a, you know, uh, I mean, they, you know, Bill Gates. And it can did, lock your keystrokes if yeah, it's turned on. Possibly. Yeah. And it's always turned on. It tries to always be on, which I hate. Uh, you know, and Bill Gates did like rail against Congress when they brought him in there, tried to screw him at one point and said, you know, hey, what's good for Microsoft is good for America, you know, quoting Henry Ford or something. But since then, he's been very uh, in bed with the feds and like, I would not, you know, complying with any, pretty much anything, a lot of things that they want put in and don't even force. So I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Skype just has a huge backdoor in it right now. And uh, yeah, I that's, that's really that's suspect, really suspicious. Yeah, yeah, completely that it installs Skype as an update. Um, well, it installs Skype. Skype's now owned by Microsoft, but it right. installed Skype on computers that didn't have it. Not just an update; it updated it on other computers, but. It just installed Skype. It's it was weird, man. I've never I would never put Skype on this computer, and all of a sudden, you know, I rebooted it and Skype opened up. I was like, "What?" And I had to go search for what happened. Right, right, yeah. And I feel like a lot of the the big tech companies are doing similar things in the sense that they're trying to. Um, I guess homogenize isn't the right word, but they're trying to everything that they own. They want to be linked to you and have a profile. You were telling me that uh, YouTube, which is owned by Google, um, it wanted is now to demanding, give you a real name. Is now demanding your real name. Well, not, it's it's kind of voluntary at this point. Um, I just let it go ahead and do it because I use my real name anywhere, any uh, almost everywhere, anyway. You know, but yeah, I, I noticed I don't know if it has like quashed me wanting to comment on some people, you know, like okay. as freely. So I think it's going to hurt their business plan. Um, I hate how YouTube is just like such a sewer of negative comments more than any it other is. social network. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I don't think the answer is regulation. I don't think the answer is almost forcing you into changing your settings of privacy like this. Um, basically, when I logged on one day, it said, you know, or I hadn't commented in months. They've been doing this for a while, but I went to comment on something and it said, oh, we'd like you to use your real name now. And I was like, huh? And I, yeah. I went ahead and let it do it. And I've heard that if you if you say no, it says, give your reason. And there's a drop down menu and none of them are, I'm concerned mm -hmm. about my privacy. And, you know, Google, who owns YouTube, has been asking for your Gmail has been asking for your cell number for a long time. And, and it's all tied in with Facebook. Facebook mm -hmm. sometimes will give you a catch paw for commenting, even when you're not doing it a lot and demand your cell number before it'll let you get out of having to do that every comment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I didn't experience what you're experiencing with YouTube. So I'm wondering if maybe it's doing it to different users at different times. Um, for me, it just, let me post and it used my my username but i remember when facebook was moving everybody to um timeline instead of a, the old wall format you know different people got switched over involuntarily timeline time, sucks so. and it's mandatory timeline now. Does i got suck. switched over well groups are all switched over i know um you know and that's why it took me two weeks to even notice adam's comment like i Probably never would have found it if I wasn't like last night going, oh, I guess I should check all my traps, you know, as DJ calls it. And, <laughs> you know, I, and then I took a screenshot of it and then I wanted to go back and look at it again uh, to post my comment to him or my blog post link to him so he could, you know, because I don't know. I think he has my email blocked or something or just it doesn't get through to him. But uh, I couldn't find it again. Maybe he I don't think he deleted it. I don't think he figured it out in that 10 minutes. Um you know, I just couldn't find it. I mean, the timeline thing is ridiculous. It's supposed to make it easier to find your old stuff. It makes it harder. 
Yeah, yeah. And I don't really know what the answer is to Facebook. Like, me and my wife were complaining about it and... Uh, you know, I tried my to get off bro- it, and it sucked. That's what my wife, my, my, my wife's brother was like, "Well, just don't use it. I don't ever use Facebook." Just like, when you thought you were out, they pulled you back in. Yeah, you kind of. I think it fills a really important role, and I know, I know there's competition. You know, Google has their. Google's their like you know competitor. you post something and there's crickets. I mean, nobody you know Facebook. You can get a I can I get exactly I exactly. get thread. I start threads on there that end up with four or five hundred comments from you know eighty or a hundred people. Yeah, so yeah. You know, that is impossible it's, on Google Plus. Just because Facebook is so ubiquitous, but that doesn't mean it's like that forever. I mean, there could everybody could one day move to Google. I mean, MySpace used to be the it thing, and well, now, I now got there's on, crickets on MySpace. I know you can always tell old movies or like you know eight year old and seven year old movies because they talk about well he's on MySpace I should be concerned I'm like no you shouldn't <laughs> nobody's on there anymore. All right. Hey, speaking of social networking, do you like the new chicklets I put on our blogs? Yes, and our pre- sharing podcast. is caring. Sharing is caring. It's so <laughs> gay. It's so uh, it's almost socialist. I love it though. But that one works better than the other one we have. It actually like posts the right thumbnail and I like and it. Summary. And it's funny and it's it's yeah. cute. So we'll stick with it and stick with us because we're gonna go sell some things and we'll be right back. Worms. Yeah. Hey, yo. Yeah. What's up, fiends? So, a uh, big Chilling. win for pedophilias or pedophiles in, in England. Yeah, what? big win. Um, apparently, um, apparently, tons of cameras have been found in in Britain's schools, in the changing rooms and toilets, according to um, a Freedom of Information request, which I didn't know they had in uh, in England, but apparently they do, and. Um, a guy who was doing some research would, would go to the different or fill out these information requests to various schools and found that more than 200 schools around Britain were using closed circuit cameras in toilets and changing rooms of the students. Looking at your mm. little kids while they do their business. Well, isn't the government also putting cameras in children's you know, like school bathrooms now in England? Well, that, it is the government. I mean, these are schools. Oh. These, are pu- these are public schools. Sorry, I was checking how many people are listening to the streaming feeds fiend restreaming, and it's gone way up. I think it was Good. not correctly <laughs> reporting or something. There's people yeah. in Taiwan and Canada and all over America. You were you and were doing a bit of your own surveillance. Yeah, I was spying on the. <laughs> I was watching the fiends who watch the fiends who watch the fiends who watch the fiends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which uh, you recently posted to our <laughs> blog that uh, now some municipalities in America are buying cameras to watch the cameras that keep that watch people as they're at stoplights and give. Yeah, because people are vandalizing those because the ones at stoplights kind of have to be where you can see them, you know, because they have to be like pointing right at mm-hmm. the the serial plate what is it license plate yeah um the state plate um state but, plate mm-hmm. but they're out in the open and people sneak up behind them and vandalize them so they've put kind of like hidden cameras in trees nearby to watch those cameras and also they said this article like first of all like we're not doing this as a big brother thing or as a, a revenue gathering thing it's to increase safety which is horse <laughs> horse crap don't want to have to put anything in the bitcoin swear jar horse hockey and uh you know wrong and also like studies have shown i guess it's a logical fallacy to say studies have shown but uh Field authority. I, I yeah i actually put the i linked the i linked the studies on on there so on my blog post so uh okay. <laughs> known studies have shown that uh red light cameras actually decrease camera safety so it is all about big brother intrusion and control. <laughs> they, I'm and sure money. they do decrease camera safety because people will vandalize the cameras. Not camera safety, traffic safety. <laughs> so many adjectives <laughs> yeah. and, and nouns to keep track of in this I language know, right? <laughs> that, you, that you humans have. Interesting planet, by the way. Thank you for inviting me. Yes, um, yes of course. Yeah, so, uh, but they said that the cameras cost like, was it like 30000 to to 100000 to replace? Was that the figure? Yeah, an insane amount, yeah. Yeah, and it's like if you don't want these being destroyed, don't put them up in the first place. Why are you stealing money from us to make red light cameras so you can charge us more money to steal more money from us? I mean, it's so obviously a revenue gathering scam. I don't see how you can how anybody can see it as anything but that. Yep, and I got a note on another thing I posted. This uh, 
$130 nine ounce pocket gun. Uh, it's the Cobra Enterprises two shot C22 Derringer. Um, I recommend buying it used because I don't really want to encourage putting money into that company's pocket. They made a commemorative Orin, Orin Hatch pistol in honor Ugh. of the senator who proposed that copyright owners should be able to destroy the computer equipment and information of those suspected of copyright uh. infringement, including file sharing. And then like Wired, he retracted that when Wired pointed out a couple days later that his website was using uh, a JavaScript for a menu that costs money to use that they'd never paid to use. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so, screw that guy. Or, yeah. Orrin Hatch has always been ridiculous. That's, that's not the only bad thing he's ever done, man. He voted for all the bailouts. He voted. He's really like, you know, pro-American. Like, if you criticize the government, you might be a terrorist, you know. Yeah. The only good thing he ever did was pardon uh, Fuji's producer, John Forte, uh, because apparently you know he really likes his music. Well, Orrin Hatch is also used to manage bands uh, and is also a performer and has made like, you know, 10 or $20,000 in royalties on records of songs he's written for himself or other people. So, you know, he's, he's one of those like, well, I think copyright should be protected because it affects me. And who knows what yeah. his connection is through that to the Fuji Fuji's, you know, I mean, he might owe a famous ah, producer or something, or I don't maybe. know that, but I would look at that. I'd follow the money. Maybe, but in either case, he obviously has some kind of uh, conflict of interest there, which <laughs> conflict of interests are so ridiculous because anybody in the in the government, anybody in the Congress obviously has tons of conflicts of interest. You know, they're people. They live in this society. So why do they get to well, to they're decide bought how the rest out. of us live? I mean, they're all encouraged, you know, their war chests to get elected are a conflict yeah. of interest. You know, exactly. and you know what I saw the other day was the the Department of Defense is one of the major donators to both the Republican and 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 Democrat candidate, no matter who they are. And I'm like, you know, it's through pacts and through like employees and stuff. And I'm like, how is that not a conflict of interest, man? I do want to it, do an it upcoming. Is, yeah, I'm. I'm I'm surprised they can do that. I mean, they, if they do do it, they must be hiding it really well. Because uh, I seem to remember uh, Microsoft. When I was oh, Department of Defense is first. Microsoft is second. I want to wow. do an upcoming cast on something that's been on our notes for like six months. We never touched is the top 100 uh, donators or top 100 uh, recipients of money from the Department of Defense. And there's some really Ooh. weird stuff on there. Yeah. Like you know, uh, one of them is the state of California. And like no explanation of what service they're providing for the Department of Defense for the money they get. Mm. And one is the country mm. of Canada. And I'm like, wow, really? You know, a lot of them are like, you know, obviously like, you know, Grumman and like the drone manufacturers and GE. And, but it's right, like, right. there's some General really dynamics. weird ones on there. And I want to discuss that in an upcoming cast. Yeah, that's really good. Okay. So yeah, we'll do a little bit of research and we can have a long form cast. We are fond of doing those where we tackle, you know, a subject at length instead of our normal stream of consciousness throwing arrows in all directions. Um, yeah, I think that's a good deal. Uh, good Flinging idea in an upcoming beef. Wednesday cast. Flinging yeah. beef. With our Flinging beef, beef cannon. like a line cook. Beef cannon. Beef cannon. <laughs> wow. Wow. I didn't uh, even mean that the way it sounded. That, that, that's a little raunchy, Mike. I think I'd have to put a tenth of a Bitcoin in the Bitcoin swear jar just for bringing that for up. For that one, yeah. 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 Even though it was an accident, we got we to gotta come down hard Yeah. with the beef cannon. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. How, how do we rein it in after that? I don't know. Does it need reining in? Can't we just uh, have a moment of silence for everyone who's a victim of the state? And a victim of our podcast, Beef Cannon? Yeah. Okay. Moment of silence. All right. Has it been a moment yet? No. Come on, man. Do it for real. <laughs> Not a minute. Just a moment. Just 10 seconds, man. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. I did it. I, re I really felt it, man. Did you? Did you? I did. I like uh, almost cried. It was almost like a prayer. I don't pray, but it was like... A lot of people have been hurt yeah. by the state, by every state. That's true. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look at the demo side numbers if you think we're ridiculous. If you think it's us, the freedom lovers, that are the ones that cause the problem. If you think it's anarchists that are the ones breaking windows and killing people, go go look up demo side. Google it. Wikipedia it. And, and realize that it's not the ones that are calling for uh, the end of the state 
that are violent. It's yeah, the, the de demos and demo the proliferation of the state that are demo side is not um, people who you know managers that get your demo and throw it in the trash pile. No, no, it's Explain a term demo that means side. it's a term that means um, death by government. People who have been killed by the state by democracy. And, and it's interesting to note that uh, the numbers um, a lot of times don't include war. Um, in fact, the stat on the wiki, wiki page is that more people have been killed um, by democide than any other form of death, including war, uh, which means they, they take war out of the calculus, which I would, I would add that. I, I think war is obviously the biggest result of democide or, or the biggest um, addition to the numbers of democide. But even if you take war out of it, the state has still killed more people than any other concept or entity in the world. So those who think that anarchists are violent are sadly mistaken because anarchists want to end the most violent thing that has ever plagued humankind in history. So there. Uh, I can't follow that, man. You can't? No. Another moment of silence. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, I'm Maybe. not just killing time. I just, I, that was beautiful. That, that oh, touched me, man. Well, well, in special you. places. I'm, I'm always trying to touch people in special places. We, Usually we touch it gets the me in world. trouble. We touch the world in special places. We, we reach out and touch them. Yes. From our well, <laughs> uh, from, from our bedrooms. From my bedroom and from your closet. Yeah, yeah. Although my closet's attached to the bedroom. But yeah, I said awesome things, and you should listen to them. And listen to us usually, because we, we sometimes say awesome things every now when, and then. When we're not just talking about the need for more crocodile and, crocodile and tranny hookers. <laughs> Of which there is an intense need. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There. Thank Mach you. Macho Libertarian <laughs> Flash. Well, we're going to um, take a break for... Uh, not a break. We're going to go away till Wednesday. We're going to go do some crocodile and tranny hookers. And um, we look forward to telling you about it on Wednesday on Freedom Fiends. Worms. Peace. Peace. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. Basic Handgun and Rifle with Jared Waltz. First rule of being alive is you own yourself. A groundbreaking approach to firearms and self-defense training. Beautifully filmed and easy to understand instructions make this one a must-have. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. New DVD from Michael W. Dean. Available on Amazon. Your house is your property.